Hey everyone, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. I hope you don't mind that the background is like not symmetrical. I know it's really annoying, it's like a double bed, but like the classic YouTube thing is to like sit and the double bed is like perfectly symmetrical behind you, but I can't get the lighting right. <laughs> okay, I can't do it. So we're, we're working with what we've got, um, but I was like so excited to tell you about these books that I bought. So I wanted to um, film a little video. I've actually been going through a bit of a reading slump um, these last few weeks. I don't know why, I just can't focus on anything. Like, it just in general in my life, I can't really, I find it really hard to focus. And of course, reading is kind of an exercise that requires quite a lot of focus. So, um, trying to combat that. And I thought that maybe the way to do that would be because, like, nothing on my bookshelf, none of the books on my TBR are like getting me hooked. Even audiobooks, like, I can't focus on audiobooks either. I'm finding, I'm, I'm very frustrated. <laughs> so anyway, I went to the bookstore yesterday and I picked up these three books. These are all about New York City. Um, and that's where I am. That's where I'm living. And I kind of thought, you know, I'm spending a lot of time like exploring the city and walking around and maybe it would be good to immerse myself in, with some other narratives of New York City as well. So I bought these three books. I wanted to talk about them with you and share them. And hopefully these books are going to get me out of my little reading slump that I'm in. So, first and foremost, this is the first book that I picked up. It is by Colson Whitehead and it is called The Colossus of New York. Colson Whitehead is the author of Harlem Shuffle and also The Underground Railroad. I definitely think there are flaws with The Underground Railroad. It's a book I have a lot of opinions about um, because I think it's such an important subject matter. Um, but I didn't love his writing style in that book. And so I wanted to give this author another go because I know that he's so highly loved and respected, um, universally loved, I should say. And um, this is described as utterly authentic. The Colossus of New York is quite simply the most delicious 13 bites of the Big Apple I've taken in ages. Um, that's Grace Lichtenstein from the Washington Post. And I just wanted to like, fall back in love with the city from someone else's perspective, who I believe is a native New Yorker. So the blurb says, in an extraordinary series of essays, meditations, and memories, Pulitzer Prize winning author and native New Yorker, Colson Whitehead, evokes the exuberance, chaos, promise, and heartbreak of the greatest of American cities. Adopting the voices of different perspectives with almost uncanny immediacy, he sounds the plaintive notes of the lonely and dispossessed, the thoughts of longtime residents, and those magical moments when the city seems to be speaking directly to you. There is a funny knowing riff on what it feels like to arrive in New York for the first time, a lyrical meditation on the city transformed by a sudden rain shower, and a wry look at the ferocious battle that is commuting. Ain't that the truth? Um, <laughs> my first experience of New York was like getting on the subway and just immediately being yelled at by someone who was asking me if the train was going to Harlem. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I don't know. Um, I just got here off the plane <laughs> with my suitcases and he's like, how the fuck do you not know where this plane, this train is going? How are you on this train and you don't know, you don't know where it stops? And I was like, I'm just following Google Maps, like I don't know. Um, and obviously Google Maps only shows you like up until where you are going, so it didn't show me like the further stops. I was so stressful. <laughs> that was like my first experience of the city. Um, and I remember getting off the train being like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this, you know. Even the chapters like they just flicked and this one's called The Port Authority, which is like this Port Authority bus station just around the corner. So I think like I'm, like, I think it's gonna be a very massive experience like reading this book. Yeah, the chapters are like Times Square, Downtown, JFK, Rush Hour, Brooklyn Bridge, Coney Island, Broadway. Um, and then also one of the chapters is called Rain. One of the chapters is called Morning. And in a way those kind of are locations those are settings in, them, in and of themselves because they completely transform the city. Like the city in the morning, the city on a rainy day. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this. In fact, I might start it immediately after finishing this video. So there we go. And hopefully that will be slump over. <laughs> Before I tell you about the next two books, I just wanted to let you know that today's video is very, very kindly brought to you by Surfshark. Friends of the channel, we love them. And Surfshark is a VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. And what that basically means is that they can encrypt your data, which is being sent to the internet. So when you use public Wi-Fi, for example, like if you go to a coffee shop, to the library, anything like that, and you want to use your laptop in those spaces, which is something I do all around New York, like that's my best way to work outside of my home. Surfshark has got you covered. Surfshark will protect you because you are at massive risk of someone hacking your data 
at that point um, when you're using public Wi-Fi. So the fact that Surfshark encrypts everything you put onto the internet is a godsend. Surfshark also has many other incredible perks, but one of my favorites is that you can virtually travel. So you can change the location of your device. So if you're in America, for example, you can still access the UK version of Netflix. And if you're in the UK, you can still access the American version of Netflix or any website for that matter. So that's a really, really cool feature of Surfshark. And the best news is I have got a big fat discount code for you. Like this is insane. You can get three extra months free using the code JBurks. That is the deal of the century if ever I heard it. So thank you so much to Surfshark for working with me on this video. I really, really appreciate it. And I've been virtually traveling to my heart's content. But back to the city I am currently in, and let's talk about this one. This is the Highline Scavenger Hunt. Now, I have lived in lots of different places across the city and two of my homes um, were either end of the Highline. So when I first got to New York, I lived in Greenwich Village and then in um, March, I lived in Hudson Yards. And those two locations basically bookend the High Line. That's where you get on when you get off. So um, this is by Lucas Crawford. I'm very, very intrigued because um, it's kind of about the area where the High Line is and its rich history. In the High Line scavenger hunt, Lucas Crawford delves into the history of the High Line, an elevated train track, now a reclaimed public park that edges the borders of Lower Manhattan. The adjacent neighborhoods were known for early transsexual community, for AIDS activism, kink and leather clubs, transsex work, queer youth, and more. These poems braid transgender history, autobiographical reflection, and architectural speculation into a commentary on the histories now lost to gentrification and possible futures of the space. How fascinating does that sound? Um, and I thought this would be such a cool poetry collection. I don't know if I've ever read a poetry collection that is so rooted in a very specific geographical space. And so I can't wait to read this. Sorry, it seems like there's so many sirens today. <laughs> There's a lot going on in New York City right now. Um, I can't wait to read this. This is the Highline Scavenger Hunt. Um, and I've already messaged some friends being like, I think you should read this too. Um, I'm gonna read it and if it's any good, I will pass it on. And they're all very keen um, <laughs> to read it as well. So I feel like this is gonna be a well-thumbed book. <laughs> um, it's gonna be passed around a lot of my friends in the city. So there you go. And then the final book that I bought uh, yesterday was this one. This is by Caitlin Tiffany and Lizzie Plowgick on Nobody Famous. The subtitle is Guesting, Gossiping, Gallivanting. The three G's, the three crucial G's, Gossiping, <laughs> Guesting, and Gallivanting. I think that's so fun. Welcome to Lizzie and Caitlin's New York. Just two regular women as they recap small parties, weird dinners, and aimless evenings. Highlights include taking the Q train to Coney Island, an Uber to eat garbage plates, and a walk to a Crown Heights birthday party. Eclectic and endlessly funny, these dispatches invite you to get together and go nowhere with nobody all that famous. Um, I thought that sounded really interesting. Um, and these two authors wrote a lot about kind of like internet culture um, at The Atlantic and at The Verge. Um, so I think that this is gonna be like a modern book for a modern person. <laughs> do, I, do I define myself as a modern person? I guess, I guess everyone is a modern person if you're existing right now. Anyways. <laughs> Point is, I think that this would be really interesting. Um, it's also very short, it's only 111 pages, and I'm hoping like some quick, punchy reads that are about the place I'm physically in, I can see around me, that I feel really immersed in, are gonna get me out of this like reading slump. Got a bit of a sore throat today, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> don't know why. Um, I went to a Mets baseball game last night. Um, I had no idea what was going on. Uh, I was like, is it the same as rounders? <laughs> because I don't know really anything about baseball. Um, and I think it was kind of just like a little bit like rounders, but with a longer bat and they do it with two hands, not one. That's my, that's my British summary of baseball. <laughs> um, I really had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know who was winning most of the time. So there we go. That, I think that's why my voice is a little hoarse because best believe, even if I don't know what's going on, I'm still going to be singing and chanting along with everyone else. Um, and just before that, I had also gone and bought these books. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to Surfshark for working with me yet again. I really appreciate you and um, have a wonderful day. Let me know what books got you out of a reading slump in the comment section. Um, I'd love to have a little read through and see what you guys have been loving reading recently. So um, all the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you very, very soon. Bye-bye.